Joachim, hello. Evening to you. Uh, welcome to the party. Today we're here to discuss the question, are we individuals? And uh, this question I propose to others, other uh, compatriots of the world. And um, I think some shied away from it um, because this is the impression that they gave me because they they really think that there is no question. Okay, uh, let's see what the, the, I'll read you the first notes uh, that I sent, the preliminary notes, and then you um, spell out your thoughts about them. The struggle between individual and society or the war to consolidate what I call the atomistic, highly inflammable society of individuals is usually taken for granted in our secular, so to speak, societies. Now, provocatively, I state, in our brave new world, the individual stands to society as the atom stands to physical bodies. Both can be broken down, both can explode. What happens to the individual when it is divided? When it's impact, in other words. What divides the individual? In what context can the individual be divided? The simplest answer might be language or dialogue. Is the modern ego or individual a mask camouflaging dialogue as the essential nature or proper activity of the human mind? Should we think of ourselves in terms of dialogue itself, logos, as well as the persona produced by dialogue? As a persona mask, do I naturally bespeak the logos, paradigm of all persona? In that logos, do I discover my true nature, my soul? Thereby transcending the sense that I am the individual. I can be divided. Well, faced with the culture of kindness, the expression is, I think, almost is becoming ubiquitous. Uh, I get it from the school system, as you know, the culture of kindness that we live in, of today's egocentric identity politics. Am I to fight as social justice warrior for my so-called individuality against the demands of what? Not of the new society in the making, but of traditional societies, societies that do not extol the individual as end in itself. Right? Because they're traditional and so they bind the so-called individual to uh, more fundamental problems and demands. Uh, so they're not individual centric as it were. Religio. Huh? Yeah. Religio, that's that sense of the word. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, religere, yes, they tie them to clearly. We have not the individual centric society, traditional society, but if anything, it, it, you know, the theocentric or whatever else you want to say, but it's not the egocentric. Not if, so are we to become these social justice warriors? And the, the proposed answer is not if I am not an individual, but the, what I'm proposing here, a composite. In other words, in this case, it would seem that this I of mine does not arise as an end in itself, but as a reducible pointer or a way of pointing back to its soul. Here, uh, the proposition is the poetic art producing egos being the soul. So again, going back to the logos, what am I fundamentally? Am I this ego against the society or am I something more fundamental, which is not this ego? Yet, social demands do exist, do they not? Of course. But now, how should we respond to those demands if we are not individual? And here, provocatively, as I said before, I say, if we're not individual powerhouses of autonomous freedom, empowerment. This is the name of a game today. 
as persons, perhaps. Now, insofar, and we see this, I mean, in, in the uh, foundation of the, you know, the political foundation of the United States, this makes sense. Nobody's speaking about the individual, I think, this egocentric society. Insofar as demands bespeak authority, when authority attempts to repress persons, do we not call it tyrannical? So the recognition of tyranny is compatible with the notion of myself as a person, not as an end in itself. As, so uh, you can have the uh, struggle against tyranny that is not presupposing that individual. As composite persons, we could respond to tyranny by defending the proposition that authority is itself and legitimate only insofar as it represents the dignity of the person. You could say also the, you know, the, the, that for the sake of which the person is, is there, appears. Not as an end in itself then, the person, but as a life produced by and pointing back to an inalienable dialogue. We're back to the Logos, our quote, bread of life, which is more fundamental than any chitter chat that we could produce as individuals. Outside of the society of narcissism, is this provocative or not? Law would invite us to return to a natural source of civility. That which uh, enables us as persons to be civil persons or citizens is, would be this fundamental logos or telos of the human being as such. So that's the uh, provocative statement or set thereof. And uh, the floor is yours, Joachim. Who's? And everything that's in it. I'll, I'll, I'll put on my mask and stand on the floor. How's that? Oh, the, the table floor. Yes. Yeah. But the, well, the table, well, the cat's still home, so I'm, I'm going to stay off the table. Um, okay. Well, um, the first paragraph uh, takes me back to uh, a kind of story or a counter analogy that previously came up in our in, uh, discussion with Chris, I think it was. Uh, where you told the account of Inda uh, discovering the self uh, as, well, first as, uh, well, the, the, the demons discovered it as what's apparent. Indra then discovers it as what's given in speech. And then finally as uh, that, that he is himself Pajamati. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, Today we would call it the mystical uh, response to that. Yes, um, but um, that would be, I suppose, the discovery of uh, the, the self as a kind of mask over or from, however you want to put it, uh, as, as continuous with the logos, as given in speech, say. Um, and that would also tie into our discussions on evil as well, I believe, um, as much as, uh, and here I'm, I have to make quite a jump, as much as it's not a matter of asking ourselves uh, why it is that we, as it were, are created, brought into being to suffer these ills as we might, um, but rather if we thought of it in terms of not only uh, this evil presupposing a necessity, but that this necessity is a logos of which we ourselves are masks, that would significantly uh, change uh, the whole nature of this problem. That's, that's the that's the first thing that comes to my mind. That we are the mask of? 
logos of logos of of yeah. actual necessity say um yeah uh, uh, that th we're we're reducible um there is you know there is this uh Now, in, in, I, I think in, in my earlier, my previous um, to this one uh, video, I refer to uh, the what what is I think is should be obvious, namely this um, covenant, as it were, this fundamental covenant that Christianity uh, sets out to vindicate between the Father and the Son. Now, right. that covenant is uh, somewhat of a reformulation of the Hebrew covenant between mm -hmm. uh, God, the husband, and the wife being the people. So now you have the son who is the, the son of man. So it is the first Adam, um, the first Adam being the presence of God within man, the hiddenness, if you like. Yeah, primordially. Yeah, well, um, that, or, you know, well, yeah. I mean, that which, that which fundamentally is, imitatio Christi suggests that uh, you know, there's something fundamental about the human being, and that is what it is, uh, this logos. Or you might refer to the, the medieval icons of the Christ's creating the world. Well, yes, he's the principle of, of creation. However, we understand creation then of ah, the world. Yeah, he's yes, the, right. He's also a kind of, he is the new Jove. He is also called, you know, and is, is it a, a question of um, creating order? He is, you know, he is bringing the cosmos back. And after all, what is Christianity uh, at its, in, in its inception? It is a cure to the, uh, the falling apart of the empire. Why doesn't it not develop in the Middle East? And why, why does Paul take it to Rome? Uh, what's the whole point of these Jewish scholars taking it to Rome? Well, because Rome is falling apart. And where could it succeed as a message? Well, there where it's meant to be, uh, fulfilling its proper telos, is, is, is the, the function that is proper to it. And what is the function of this message? Well, to save um, this, the, the scene uh, from falling into uh, chaos. So you're recovering an order that is not merely positive. You see, you cannot just ap appeal to laws, and that's a patchwork, when everything is falling apart inside. You have to recover this bond between the principle of order within the human being, all men, not just those who were given the law from outside, in, in this case, the Jews, but all men, and the law outside. Otherwise, the law outside becomes uh, a tyrannical instrument, and so not really law at all, the opposite, and inside becomes decrepit and, and uh, vulnerable to tyranny. So if you want to save the Rome, and that's what happened, although, you know, there was a reconfiguration ostensibly. You need Christianity. Um, so, uh, I think that in all traditional societies, we have this, uh, some kind of covenant. This was, um, this was in the modern world, was replaced by contracts, uh, secular yes. contracts. Between, not, the, not the same between thing. Between the individual well, between, between scoundrels who knew they were quite well that they were scoundrels and they, their, their fellow uh, you know, folks were scoundrels, but they figured that um, they could cover it up with a, with a contract. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Wolves, perhaps, however you want to put it. Yes, yes. So we have to, we have, to have a contract, otherwise we're going to kill each other. Or perhaps in the Freudian sense, werewolves. Here, or in the Darwinian wolves. sense, where wolves? Here, wolves. Here, wolves. That's where. Right. But now we have, oops, we have, uh, who is, uh, Chris is in. 
Let's see. Chris is joining us. Joining us, maybe. Okay, so we'll wait for him to to come along. And now we have a, 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 an overturning of, of this uh, subversion of, of, of that, right? Um, and I think it, 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 a lot of us, if, if you want to retrace it to something, it has to deal with a collapse of the father and the son. And the collapse of the father and the son can be uh, seen, um, for one thing, already in Islam. Um, so, you know, there's this um, notion that um, in the Quran uh, that, and this is, you know, the, the Muslims who tell us that um, the, the, the traditional defenders of the, of the, um, of the law, uh, that, um, you know, if you had three gods, as in the Trinity, or three aspects that they consider, you know, three gods, but then there would be struggle between them, they would fight for supremacy. Um, and, and this is very much a, a tribal warfare attitude, which is what Islam comes out of and what it tries to uh, settle, the, you know, the inter-tribal, infra-tribal warfare. And it's pretty successful at that, uh, but it has to do it necessarily with weapons. I mean, heavy duty stuff. Because otherwise, these tribes are not going to hear you. It, that doesn't mean that Islam should understand itself as essentially carried on by the sword. It, it means that it understands that in our corrupt condition, tribal condition, uh, you need the sword too. <laughs> so, but after Islam, uh, we can bracket that. We have. So having the collapse of the two father and son, you have the absorption of the, what is the product of that collapse into the new, um, the, the new uh, individual, the ego, ego, cogito, you know, ergo sum. Mm -hmm. Who is this sum who is not being somewhere? Yeah, I, he doesn't say I exist, I am. But in medieval language, the only one who says I am is you know who, <laughs> or you don't know who. But the thing is, it, it ain't you. Uh, but he says, I am without need of precising, specifying, well, I'm there, right? I'm determined. But there's another higher that is not determined somewhere, and that is ubiquitous or what have you. So, not bound to the flesh, of course. And, and of course, it turns out that this ego is bound to the flesh, is bound to the world, which is material, however, because, you know, for the various reasons. But we don't you know, need to get back to, to Descartes in detail. Suffice it to say that this notion that we have absorbed, that we're from day one of our lives today, we are individuals. That's just a synonym for the Cartesian ego, as it has... Uh, matured in our society of egos. And we take that to be um, something beyond question, beyond doubt. If we drop that ego, if we drop that individual and the appeal to the individual, we will end up in, with the most obscurantist of tyrannies. Well, Marco, there is, there is um, a, a challenge from psychology. Yes. It states that the ego is a mask. For yes. uh -huh. a kind of soup, a soup, yes. a mask that is formed by the, the law that stands over the ego, uh, over the soup, and now and then the soup will boil over. I think it's more like lava. More... Lava. It says lava soup. Yeah. Ma uh, magma. Well, it's tomato soup, you know, it's, it's, uh, magma let's soup. say it's not served, it's not eaten as hot as it's served. Right. <laughs> Right, sure, but this is, you know, I was speaking about those who appeal to um, the individuals, uh, but also to them, I dare say, also mm -hmm. to these deconstructionists of the ego, sure. because ultimately, the, what will they tell you? Uh, you have to adapt. The whole point of modern psychology is to assimilate, to adapt, to calm down and stop making trouble, stop 
you know, saying there is a problem. You are creating the problem. As you, yeah. know, you have, so you have to, those passions are there. They, I agree. These psychiatrists, psychologists, you know, clin cl clinical folks, they will tell you that this ego has an undercurrent and that it mm -hmm. is a kind of mask, but they will then tell you since underneath there is nothing rational, no. you're back to the contract. No. And so in that respect, they expose what was sort of implicit, more or less implicit in the early enlightenment, namely that this ego is there contractually underneath it there's no divine mystery under underpinning this this ego there is the we have the passions the the fears uh, and all this lava so and we better be. we better uphold this ego because otherwise you fall back into hell well there might be a, a fate underneath it that you can will to love okay we're back to that. There's that. Yes. And then finally, finally, but how do we, you know, it is a kind of, um, it, um, attempt to save that ego. So how do you save that ego by having it embrace its own lava? And it will be one with the lava. And what's underneath? So it's it's chaos and chaos filled with a lot of good and evil mixed up, you know. So if you want to embrace good and evil, Machiavelli, you need both. You embrace it, and in the act of embracing that as a fate, you can transcend it and go beyond good and evil. And you can become a superego, which is even better. Because the superego uh, is a new god who has transcended the limitations of the early ego. You so may you author the new laws. Huh? You may author the new laws. Autonomously. create. You can be a creator of everything. You're the super creator. Woo. Yes, you can create everything ex nihilo. Isn't that beautiful? From nothing. So let's say uh, you, you are innocent and I want to determine that you are guilty. All I need to do is be creative. And I create you as a guilty person. Well, I think you have some 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 some, uh, some material available for that already. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this sense of in, now I feel entitled to do whatever the hell I want. Mm -hmm. Why not? I'm an individual. You cannot divide me now. I am the true individual beyond good and evil. The true one. Yes, awaken to your destiny, some such. Well, you know, it's. Um, uh, do you, Should we do grant you that that would be the the destiny of the individual at its best, if if it's granted? Say that again, please. Uh, would we would would we necessarily uh, have to admit that that is the ultimate, the best destiny of the individual if that term is granted? The If what is granted? If the notion of, in the, of the individual is granted. Yes, that is the, the, the fate of the individual. And it's, um, I would say that it is an unpacking. We have an unpacking of the presuppositions. So whenever they have the first appeal to the ego, uh, this ego, uh, ego sum, basically he's saying. Descartes is saying ego sum. But ego sum in the Bible is, you know who. And what is he up to? Is he simply replacing him? No. In, he's not mentioning ego, right? Cogito ergo sum. As if you were to shy away, he's falling short of saying ego sum. Of course, cogito ego, hey, cogito ego hey, is me. Uh, but... Um, uh, what he, I think, you know, that, it, and this is not just the proposition because it reflects the arguments and, and the whole uh, ouvrage. Uh, it, it's a matter of saying, here we suggest this, and now we're going to unpack it. We have a blueprint. We're going to unpack it. It's going to take uh, some a lot of work, and everybody's into this. 
everybody's going to build up this new present, this new world, this new present, in which it's a new place, in which everybody um, is um, emerging as that, uh, as the, the, the realization of that message. So we're gonna we're gonna get there. We're constructing that that new world, that new present, in which this we well we sort of find out that we are that um, we're in that business of of, um, of super creativity. So you know he doesn't need to spell it out at the beginning. It's about opening up the the project. Say okay, now we have to realize it. When we're, then, when we're all in it together, we finally we realize where we are. But then it's too late. We can't come out of it because we've built this, built this new, in Strauss's terms, this new cave, and now we're stuck in it. We can't get out of it. Hence, you know, people who complain about it will tell me, but still, ah, but the individual. How can you not? Now, I do have a an old colleague of mine and he says that in that passage that i that i uh read uh i am being romantic i'm romanticizing uh, about uh traditional societies traditional societies he adds do to some extent extol the individual as an end in itself really no clue. He has no clue about what he's talking about uh, linguistically. If they uh, do the, so, the, they, must, they must have done that in very different words. Yeah. Well, to begin with, the individual was God, the only indivisible individual. You cannot divide it. Period. End of the story. Simple. Yeah. No uh, there's no, you know, uh, just no ambiguity to it. Now, just not in the modern sense. So he wants to mm, compromise there. Fine, let's see what he's up to. But rather, in the sense of the individual's potential to strive for genuine knowledge and perfection of virtue. Woo! Woo! So he's saying that the ego individual, Descartes, mm, is not in the traditional society purely an end in itself what they appeal to is the perfection of the individual as a potential the individual what they extol is the individual's potential for genuine knowledge and perfection of virtue now if you look at Socrates. I like, you know, to go back to Socrates. You do. Uh, it's my, he's my love. So, um, imagine telling him, are you striving for genuine knowledge and the perfection of virtue? Huh? Do you have a potential to strive? What does that mean? The potential to strive? Oh boy, he'll say, Ooh, let's unpack. Okay. Huh? I'm capable of striving. Hmm. Does that mean I can climb? I'm capable of climbing a mountain. Empowerment. And I'm going to reach genuine knowledge. Knowledge? What's genuine knowledge? Divine knowledge for him. And what is the perfection of virtue? God's virtue. But I still don't know what the heck that word even means. What? The. No, virtue. Ah, yeah. Well, forget about the perfection. We don't even know what virtue is to begin with. But um, the perf and this is where he's at, by the way. <laughs> but the perfection of virtue would be the virtue of God. So divine virtue. So we're str we have a potential as individuals, Descartes' ego, ego, we individuals on the basis of this self individed undivided individual self we have the, the power the potential the capacity yeah, 
to climb a mountain and reach what? Genuine knowledge and perfection of virtue. In other words, divine virtue is ours. It is not virtue. It is not something outside that you can gain. It's something you, you possess inside. So we can gain this divine strength because virtue is the strength of the mind. You see. And acquire genuine, what's genuine knowledge? Knowledge of what? Of, of the mechanisms underlying the physical universe or divine knowledge? Well, divine knowledge, genuine knowledge. What is that? How to make a cake? No, I don't think he's up to that. He's, that's what he has in mind. So divine knowledge, divine mind, and the strength of God, which we can achieve, uh, achieve by climbing and fulfilling our potential, by working hard, climbing, striving, striving, going up, uh, the mountain and becoming God. So the ego in the traditional society is extolled only in the sense or precisely in the sense that he is the goal of the of the ego. And this, the is goal almost, of the, this is huh? almost Jordan Peterson. It is almost exactly Jordan Peterson. Okay. I mean, it, it, it reminds us there are, there's agnostic undertone or overtone, uh, however you like to put it. Um, we can get there. You know, it's Tower of Babel. We, that reads to me as a Tower of Babel. Uh, I have the, I am this individual, bang, I am the brick. I am the brick. And from this brick, this brick can. Well, out of, out of mud, eh? Well, I'm an individual. Mud you can divide. It's more than that. I am the will. Mm. The, the will has the potential of becoming a super will. You, you, you see this in Kant and so forth. The general will. Uh, yes. That's the soul, I think. Yes, the general will. Well, that's a big question, what that is. Where, where does that come from? <laughs> and then, is, of course, it's very often confused with the, the will of the folks as, you know, the democratic will, which is not what he's talking about. It, it is a big question mark. Um, but um, it, it seems to me that this is why uh, that a friend of mine uh, is opposing or objecting to my propositions because he's holding on to this notion that in the past, we have a better society in traditional societies we have, we, but we still have this individual. The only thing is that the individual ego, the Cartesian ego, um, is extolled only insofar as he can perfect himself. Yeah, and that might be somewhat compatible with the American Constitution. Well, except for the fact that the American Constitution appeals to God. Um, the yes, the, well, the, pe people will say from well, it's that that doc, that document was declaration. Yeah. Well, there, there's and, debates, but you know, it, it, this is a mod, it's a recent phenomenon where they're trying to get rid of any any kind of reference to that when yeah. they speak about the creator of nature and so forth. You know, there are, there are no transcendent references. They want to get rid mm -hmm. of them. Uh, but the tradition itself, in you know, the oral tradition, I mean, so, so many things w went um, without saying. The, the way of speaking, it all uh, sure. presupposes references to, entails references to uh, biblical notions. So, conceived in a certain way, of course. However they were conceived, but the, the question is open because you don't need to have uh, Moses up there. You, you need to have, for, as far as these four folks are concerned, uh, a language that leaves that possibility open. And that window of possibility, as it were, that is left open, is how it could stand. Because the people, in general, they were not very well read, aside from the Bible and a few other things. So uh, it was obvious to them that all the, you know, the folks in general, the people in general, were reading the Bible, and that they would understand that constitution in terms of their Bible, even though the, 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 the redactors were not all in agreement as to the, the actual significance, and you might have had some deists and whatnot, but they left that window open for um, 
a traditional, shall we say, um, understanding of it. Um, I'm not sure, let me get back to this, these questions. I'm not sure persons should be contrasted with, and you tell me what you think about this expression, in my, my expression, provocative of course, individual powerhouses of autonomous freedom. Is that bad? Is, or let me put it this way, is that something that we should not contrast persons, the person as opposed to of this individual powerhouse of autonomous freedom. How do you understand that expression? How do I understand this? Uh, that 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 uh, opposition. And, well, and also the individual powerhouse of autonomous freedom. Does that speak mm -hmm. to you? That expression. Well, I mean, it's it's in some way that's the situation. It's it. I mean, it's it's reached both extremes at once in some way. Uh, not the not person as an extreme, but the extremes of individuality uh, yes uh, both as the the powerhouse and as the the rich sorry Pop. Yeah. Um, both as the powerhouse and as the compliant rich um so the the expression speaks to me i but 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 it's also not simply all that's going on but it is it is uh for as far as uh the individual as and in itself is concerned we are there as much as we're also not there explain well um so there is there is you 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 um you invoke the, the social justice thing um yeah. you could say that's like a very far reach of you know the individual uh, where, where where it really is this this completely uh detached autonomous generative uh dreamer however you want to put it you know this this powerhouse if you want fine um but as, uh, as long as it could be understood as this this self-determining um uh as it were your own little logos but your, your own little god yeah a, a very soupy one perhaps but yeah <laughs> there you have it um at the same time but um, that's why it's a powerhouse it, it, there's yes. a lot of this autonomous freedom flowing as as, as a soup of um, of um, uh, rights, a soup of rights that want well, to be right indicated positive rights. That's where that's the problem. There, there there's a big problem there. At the same time, you um, cut man. that individual off from all uh, transcendent appeals. Uh, besides this this the system that you're all supposed to uh, go with and the, the demands can be whatever they are and you have to be at the spear point of it always um if you're if you're if you if you're a, a gal who likes gals that means you also have to be for whatever new bloody law gets proposed you have to be at the head of it um and uh, i mean what rights do you have left? I, I, I don't. Besides the very insignificant, alienating, uh, yeah, from the public sphere. I mean, uh, yes. Yeah, so okay, there's this idea that could make people feel very powerful, but at the same time, they're very much alienated, and their legal status is not that of a powerhouse. It's, well, uh, this is. I think. I think it should be obvious. The, the the regime is is handing you your rights with one hand and with the other hand is taking them away. Giveth and taketh, yes. Well, yeah, well it, it's a it's a game of, of magic. Yeah. Here's the right. Of course. No right. Of course, what's taken, uh, yeah, what's taken is exactly equal to what is given. And so I, I see I see something of the powerhouse in what is given, but it's also not. It, 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 it's without roots so what power is really in there no, well, otherwise the magic wouldn't wouldn't work but at the same yeah. time 
that is um, that what is given, you know, is, is not uh, uh, that is uh, not the only thing that is taken away. Because what is given is an iska, that is to say, a um, bait. Yeah. So it's drawing you in. So who's the powerhouse then? <laughs> the fisherman, well, <laughs> the fisher of men. The the new society probably, huh? Yeah? Yeah. That is the new individual. Um. So I mean, there you have it. I mean, the um, totalitarian. What, I mean, what is the new the new individual? Yeah, I mean, we had a new individual in I don't know two thousand and something, but now we're here. And uh, I mean, what is the new individual? It's the it's the forums individual, the one of the the guy who doesn't you know he doesn't have anything. He might have a lot on his mind. He might not. Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't produce <laughs> anything. He doesn't own anything. He's just kind of along for the ride. I, I, that's the new individual, isn't it? The I guy who's along for the ride. No, I think that the new individual is the is the totalitarian regime. Okay. 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 In the okay, I see. There has been a, a transformation. So now we identify ourselves with the protocols as if they were our yes. own protocols. Okay. We I want see. them because the regime, the machine, says that we want them. They're even and, a part of your body in some sense. They and, protect you from harm. Yes, uh, but yes, it, it, they are the love that that uh, safeguards your. I mean, whatever you, that connects safety. you. Safety. Why safety? Safety is uh, salus. Salus is salvation. The yeah. Christian salvation, however, is for the good. You're safe mm. from evil to for the good. But here is salvation as an end in itself. You're safe. Yeah. Yeah, salvation, no good. Yeah, good and evil. There's no good outside of safety, you know? Yeah. You're and it's an, irresi it's an irresistible grace. I've been thinking about this with the new cabinet formations in the, in the Netherlands. It's an irresistible grace. These people are going to save you, whether you want to be or not. You are saved. It's already been decided. You are saved. Well, the ineluctability of that salvation goes hand in hand with the notion that there's no good for the sake of which you are to be saved. It is salvation as an end in itself. It is security. You're yeah. secure. Hence that video, the, the key to that video uh, that is the most watched in on earth uh, with close <laughs> to 18 right. billion views. Yeah. And, and you know, keep it in mind, again, that you have billions of people who have no exposure to the internet, including the Chinese population. So why? Because they don't need it. They're already in the cage. But the thing is, they're, what is they're, the, they're their own internet. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, yes. Uh, what is the message of the video? The most watched. Um, it is precisely that uh, security. You are safe, and that is the goal. You laugh your way into safety from what? And that's the you know the extended, the extended family. Yeah. Um, uh, the Sunday school sharks, the Sunday sharks. Yes, well, that's what um, sorry, I was getting this. How we go there? Somebody wants to be admitted. Yes, somebody wants to be admitted into our safe circle. Into safe. our safe. Come, Chris, come here, come hither. Yes. Come, come. Come on, Z. Um, it's here. All right, okay, you're, you're the, uh, my uh, other uh, correspondent hmm. uh, was uh, oh. asking me uh, about this latter passage. And he says, well, this is fine, but set in the context of the last sentence or two sentences of the prior paragraph, well, it all seems a bit vague and airy, what I had stated. Hey, um, it well, um, and, and he pastes the passage, that, which I'm, I'm going to read now. As composite persons, we could respond to tyranny by defending the proposition, this is what I had written, that authority in it is itself, so true authority is itself, and legitimate, so good authority. Authority in itself is good, only insofar as it represents the dignity of the 
person, not as an end in itself, but as a life. So what is good authority? What is this talk about composite persons? So in other words, you open it up and you see what's there. Uh, it entails the defense of the proposition that uh, authority, it, true authority is legitimate insofar as it points to the dignity of the person. What's that? What's that? Um, the dignity of a life produced by, and so it's uh, civil life, okay? This is what it's been. Uh, produced by and pointing back to a fundamental inalienable uh, dialogue or bread of life. So outside, so here we have um, what, what, what is meant to, uh, what is meant by this composite person? Why is this talk about composite persons or persons as such, not as an end in itself, the person, but as something rather uh, the order of a mask. Why is it important? Because it, it suggests that authority, genuine authority um, is there on behalf of, okay, so the outside authority, if you like, on behalf of the proper telos of the person. Not of the person in itself, as an end in itself, but of a proper telos. And what's that proper telos about? Well, it is produced by and points back to this inalienable dialogue, this bread of life, this logos, if you like. Um, that uh, telos has been eliminated today and it's been replaced, if you like, by the new telos of the individual, no longer grounded in a fundamental dialogue that it points back to, but establishing the new society of individuality. Okay. This new society has its own telos, immanentistic uh, a, a telos of individuality. For you go from the little individual to the universal individual. You find this in Hegel too. Somebody else uh, uh, was uh, another uh, one of my correspondents objected to me, say, ah, no, but in Hegel, you know, you have, you don't, you don't leave it at saying there's a Cartesian ego, of course, you just, of course, because it's going to be the new universal society that will incarnate the new, the, the essence of the ego. And then I end saying outside of the society of narcissism, law would invite us to return to a natural source of civility. What's the whole point of that business about the person grounded in order, fundamental order? Well, that's precisely it. Um, outside of the society of narcissism, and I mean by that the society of individuals, uh, law would invite, law, you know, this positive authority, would invite us to return to a natural source of civility. The source of civility is the source of the life of persons, of citizens, okay? And that source of citizenship is not a contract determined historically, but it is a fundamental order that is within human nature. Natural that reason. Logos. So the logos, in going back to Christianity, what is Christianity all about is the vindication of the, the true source of citizenship. It's not given, citizenship is not given by Mickey Mouse outside. The true source of citizenship has to deal with the fundamental order within human nature. And if you don't you know, uh, live in the light of that order, then you're not a citizen, no matter what papers you are given. So just trying to catch up here, it, it sounds like you know this, this discourse you're trying to have about <clears throat> where, how a sense of self derives from, not, not from any one person, but rather from some kind of dialogue, be it platonic, be it some kind of touchstone with God, with the logos, with this way of ordering ourselves in community, 
might say. Um, it's a, living being order, a living order, a, a living, grounding our experience. A living order grounding our experience versus bald assertions of individuality and, and this attempt to set a new universal standard for what constitutes the individual based upon no more than individual will, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, individual that, that presupposes the absence of providence, uh, divine and the, providence. Yes. The right. only providence is the one of the new technocratic state that provides. Right, right. The sort of the abstracting of all power of all governance into uh, this sort of super state at the, this global <laughs> abstract level, you know, ideas of subsidiarity be gone. Uh, um, uh, and, and right. And so if you want to play in this pachinko game huh. of, of the new society, if you want to raise the, uh, the elevation, the status and gleam of your your smoothened self, your smooth and spherical self, yes. in this pachinko game, then then you have to, um, yeah, then then you have to go down the chute. <laughs> you have you have to, as it were, you you have to, um, in some sense, swear allegiance to this, yeah, to this this notion of of individually derived um, power, authority, with bereft of logos, bereft of um, of all grounding and something more well, than human meaning there's no meaning. meaning there's no giving meaning as with the meaning Kant. is that i the as meaning is that Kant, I am a, there's no yeah. there's no synthetic yeah. a priori there's no given meaning and uh, natural meaning to the or natural end that that's out of the yeah. window it's just it about being facts. above above others <laughs> being a well right i mean upmanship uh, yeah, it's it's a basically a game of one-upmanship. It's like who has the, the nice properties, who you know, who can acquire the nice beverages and and goods, and and who has others following them in their own footsteps. Who has influence? Who is an influencer? Yeah, it's like you know, season is the, competition. I was proposing these, to Marco before that that is waning from the the competition is waning. Yeah, uh, or at least that's the idea. Uh, the you know the the the, the new the society four point point zero. Four point zero. We're, we're, we're already at four point zero. <laughs> you have to, you have to update your 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 operating system. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I narrowly, narrowly avoided an update myself. Right. Well, that suggests Joachim, that that this ego, this individual, is. Uh, manifesting itself as the machine, as the society. Oh. So there won't be that competition among the little egos because all the little egos will be identifying themselves with the new ego of the big box, the big robot, the big machine. That is the real individual, the one that is beyond question, the one that is beyond, it cannot be divided, the universal open technocratic society that determines and when it speaks the leviathan everybody speaks within it without mm. question now what but uh, chris what do you what would you say that this machine provides us with you know we said okay well traditional notions of providence are gone mm. there's a new providence how what's the how should we compare the old providence and the new providence aren't they offering safety here um it would seem yeah I, I yeah i don't i don't know um what is really being what's the difference other than one is <laughs> one is uh one has you mired in in this world i don't know it's the, i mean the, the thing about divine if you go back to like i don't know tocqueville to tocqueville you know he has he has his discourse about um about the development of governmental systems over over the middle ages or before yes and and how um divine providence was was looked to say by a 
the medieval peasant as as something to you know to look toward in the midst of his toil on on the lord's manor you know if he was a serf or something um and that that has been <clears throat> gradually you know sort of caricatured and 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 villainized ironized to the point where it's been kind of obliterated in the public mind as a valid option like you know that, that's just treated as sort of preposterous like dumb neanderthal peasant logic and um and so to you know based, to, to based work, on a nietzschean argument I suppose, yeah. Well, you know that every everyone everyone a little god, everyone wanting to be their own little divine, and in this gigantic panoply uh, pantheon of of divine gods, and so oh, I need to by... defend myself against tyranny. So I need to take up that uh, that that rifle, and you know that that. Um... Uh, you know, justice depends upon it. Right, right. Yeah. So you, you see how perhaps you know self-generating this behemoth in a way is because it, it to to first orchestrate a situation in which people feel powerless, and then to grant them some some illusion of power by becoming a part of it, thereby increasing the means by which powerlessness is spread um and yeah just kind of trying to castrate all of humanity turn us all into into mm. little obedient eunuchs uh, um yeah yeah okay um i don't know would you agree that i mean what so what what are they providing us with aren't they providing us with rifles and yet what i was suggesting to uh uh Joachim before is that you know, what we're given, what are we given? You know, when I said, you know, they're giving us rights, yeah, with one yeah. hand, and then with the other hand, the the magic gurus are taking it back. Yeah. Here it is. It's gone. Right. Um, right. But when they take it away, they're not just taking back what they gave you. They're taking more. It's the iska. Mm -hmm. It's the, the bait. This, yeah. what they, whatever they're giving you, let's say they're giving you a rifle. You say, wow, hey, watch for the strings attached. Yeah. The hook is attached to a string. Yeah. You know, you, you, you grab the hook and guess who's pulling from the other side. Right. And what they're going to catch is you. You yeah. are the target. You are the little fish. And... Um, they're not giving you the rifle for nothing because they're producing the rifles. They give you the mm -hmm. rifle, you take the rifle, you say, shoot, I'm free. Now, you're gonna have to work for the rifles. You're gonna have to work for the bullets. Then there's gonna be restrictions on the use of the, of the rifles. Then they're gonna say, well, if you don't do what we say, we'll take the rifle away. Then they're gonna tell you that well, now that you got the rifle, you have to go and fight our war. And it keeps going. <laughs> now yeah. to have the rifle, and you must have it, otherwise we're gonna be out of the society of rifle holders. You're gonna to need to be vaccinated. Now you're yeah. gonna to need to be lobotomized. Now you're gonna to have to get your balls shrunk. Now we're gonna to have to chop them up and feed them to the dogs because you cannot oh, live without your rifle. Right, of course not. <laughs> chop liver. So where I'm talking about whether it's a computer or rifle, you name it, whatever they're yeah. providing you with has a million strings attached. So they'll say, oh, what's the matter? You don't want a rifle? What's the matter? Don't you see that a world with rifles is a better, it's better than a world without rifles? Oh, you don't like the word rifle? Okay, I give you power books, Mac. Yeah. Well, you know, MacBooks, smartphones, your, 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 your little demonic satanic phone, entertainments of various kinds, name it. What about schools or yeah. school jobs? Ah, careers. The, the culture, Money. About the Money culture here. of kindness. Don't you want to be part of the culture of kindness? Yeah. Right. Virtue itself in a way. 
Um, you you don't want that? What what kind uh, of a what kind of I a fascist are you? Well, you 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 need to be, you know, yeah. fixed. You need right. to be fixed. You got the tools back there. Yeah, I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, you know, they already got you up here. <laughs> right. You got the wires and all. Um, yeah. It, you, the rewiring, right? Uh, yeah. I think that the, with this is key. The, the, the problem of providence, um, what they're providing you with is, uh, is um, baits. With baits? Baits. Bait. Oh, Listen, bait. Tell us, right. uh, I got to be off here. Maybe I'll uh, okay. come back in after dinner. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Bon okay. See you. Okay. Well, okay. Ciao for now. Thanks, guys. Ciao, ciao. So, um, do we live in a society of, of fish uh, who um, are compelled to grab baits? Yeah, it would seem so. I mean, it's a it's a fairly good image. I mean, I'm just I'm just sort of reminded of the herd of swine from like the Book of Matthew or something like that. Um, as well, because well, because who extends the bait? It's you know, when you when you grab the bait, you also become kind of a a bait extender yourself. You're working, you know, you're collaborating. You're becoming a collaborator, right? You've assimilated. You become a collaborator. But, right. Okay. Um, now, what's the bait in this case? Um, you are little god. Here's the bait. You want to be yeah. a little god. You want to be a little ego. You want to be an individual that comes with a shiny armor, yeah. can't be divided, and yet it's inalienable. Nobody can touch it. You want yeah. to be an individual? Yes. <laughs> of course I do. Uncle Sam wants you. You yeah. are the individual. And now once you come in, into the system of individuals, then you're, in, this is inevitable. It's inevitable. What will happen next is inevitable. Well, what, what is inevitable? The, the well, yeah. that individuality, I mean, putting individuality as a bait to, a, in some sense, destroy the individual. <laughs> Here's the individual. Here's the individual card. Yeah. Here it goes. Right. Here, it, here right. you see it, here you see it not. Right. I mean, it's like the way that advertisement functions, you know. Have this it your, your way. This is your body? Yeah. Here. I take your body yeah. away. Right. Right. Or, or yeah. it's my, it's my, the, you know, my body's um, freedom of choice, you know. I choose my, what my body. Uh, right. Well, it's almost like whatever is being offered is then is then taken away. So education, here is here is your mind. Here is your mind taken away? Or yeah, that's, that's or in sexuality. Great. In sexuality, here is here is sex. Here is here is sex, your sexuality taken away. You know. Well, this is a perverse. You know, these uh, it, it has to be virtual. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just you know the yeah the all all of the operations of 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 sexuality in the in the modern world leading eventually to an, a nullification of all sex sexuality. Um, Here here's the here's the material for your sexuality, and hop, your testicles come come off. Right. Here here are your testicles. <laughs> you can visit them and once they a come year. They come off. They come off. Because they right. drag you into this situation by your testicles, and so oh, oh they came off. Sorry, <laughs> you know. All right, whoopsie daisy. Wh um, <laughs> there they go. Yeah. yeah, whatever is being offered is actually hmm. 
yeah, in a way. So should, should we be afraid of losing that individuality and the claim to individuality? Because it seems to me that a lot of this is tied to the fear of losing that. Oh, oh, what if I were not an individual? What would happen then? You know, my correspondence, uh, my the, the colleague of mine telling me that, oh, well, then in the traditional society, uh, we have the extolling of the potential of the individual to become God, essentially, he's telling me. Yeah. Really, do we see that in traditional societies? Man becoming Superman? Just, I mean, it, what is God at that point? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if everyone becomes a God, then there is no God. Then God How means like nothing. That? Yeah. Well, exactly. It's like it's the same exact dynamic as before. Imagine what that would do to God's stock, to the stock market. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. If, if plunge, everyone... The prices would plunge. It's terrible. Right. I mean, it's hyperinflation, hyper divine inflation, hyperinflation of the divine. It yeah, the divine, no, the divine is inflated. It's, you know, the, the very notion of divinity itself is hyperinflated at that point. Diluted until it was worth nothing. Right. You're printing out billion dollar bills with, you know, with Moses and all the saints on them. And um, you can't buy a stick of gum. <laughs> so are, are we left with that problem? Um, this is, you know, uh, Saint-Exupéry, the, the Petit Prince, the, the little prince, uh, you know, you, he, the little prince in the story has one rose. And then he lands on earth where there's prairies packed with these roses, same flowers. And he says, my goodness, that was my little rose. It was the only one for me. Yeah. And I used to care for it. And now I see there's an, an uncountable you know, number of the same types of roses. But what was special about that rose? Well, perhaps the fact that you cared for it. Oh boy. Uh, but do we end up with this kind of delusion that that things are important just because we care for them? And so, you know, something is um, because I, because I, it pleases me or because I, does that, does that, um, is that where we, because I mean, we also have this, this, this uh, fear, I think we have the fear that, oh my goodness, there's, there's nothing to be recovered from the old traditional society. Um, it's just a matter of recognizing, you know, reconfigurating this ego and, um, um, you know, seeing what, what we give importance to and co being committed, being committed, but to what? Is there anything real that we can be committed to? Can we, can we go back to a, a traditional understanding of providence? Does that still make sense? It's, you know, it's... <laughs> It's it's hard. It, it's it's a well. There's there's sort of a paradoxical trap or something, in in trying to recapture a, a former state. Well, because as soon as I say I'm not going to play into this game of divinity, that that I am I am going to separate myself from this game of everybody trying to be an individual. Well, then are you an individual? I, then aren't aren't I claiming an individuality above the individuality game? Yes. Above yes. It? So now so, you're the bad, you're the savage in Aldous Huxley Brave New World. You become the savage. Yeah. It's you're like, dysfunctional. You're a dysfunctional individual now. Yeah. Because there is no yeah. divine providence. We've always we, we you know now we've we've exposed the lie. The only providence there is is uh, the providence of the technocratic state. Well, it's it's like you know to to have awareness of these dynamics with, and just just the awareness, and it, you almost fall worse into them than if you were just a blind. So take your pill. Fool. Take your did yeah. you take your pills today. I took some of them. I think that about 20% of the population is on antidepressants. Right. And the other the other 80% is on all the other drugs. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's... <laughs> How do you respond to those who tell you, well, you're just a dysfunctional indiv individual? I, I either get angry or sad. <laughs> You're, why don't you get go as a good good old savage, find yourself a little cave, and then they'll come and report on it, and they'll have maybe some some kind of a, a show. Uh, they'll televise you. Okay. I have been looking into the Rinzai School of Zen. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I've been investigating Zen as as some kind of practice of purification of ego purification i don't know how how doable any but you know the rinzai saying being that there is nothing to seek i don't know how you'd respond to that as a yes as a as a cone that you know that well this there, is precisely there's... yes but look this whole um now the pre-modern version of of, uh, of uh, the, that tradition is, which is a tradition also of interpretation, by the way, um, is uh, predicated on the notion that you are not an individual at all. There yeah. is no individual. Right. So there is no individual that has that strives as that interlocutor of mine would put it. Uh, the individual potential to strive for genuine knowledge and perfection of virtue. No such thing. No such thing. Because there is no such individual. That's baloney. That's just a complete yeah. illusion. Uh, what, it's, a, it's a farce. It's, it's a gimmick. It's a, it's a lie. So the foundation yeah. of that striving is uh, exposed to its own uh, um, emptiness or vacuity. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like we are part, well, it's like we're part of a body that, you know, that, that quote unquote individuals are actually members of a body, but it's, but it's the, the illusion is, is ever more convincing as the body enters into a state of anesthesia. Um, because, you know, it's, it's easier perhaps, so to speak, to convince an arm or a leg or an organ that it is an individual when the body is laid on the operating table in a state of anesthesia um, or when it lies in the grave um, in a state of decay, right? Mm -hmm. That when the body is not in a state of motion, when the, when the body is not alive and moving and, and involving the interoperation of all of its various parts. And more than that. Then, more than that, when yeah. you're dead, it, 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 there's no visible or, or no manifest principle of order. Yeah, right. It's like underlying, oh. underlying the interaction. What has them interact? There is an underlying order, a taxis, a you know, uh, the, the, the order, uh, uh, there's a natural order underlying that is setting things into motion. Now, all in a sudden, if you take that providential order away, you end up with these pieces. Yeah. It's a Lego game. Right. So, all right, what do we do as Lego? If I'm a little brick and you're another little brick, we cannot, I mean, it makes no sense to stay on our own. We, we're dysfunctional. To function, yeah. we have to build it up we have to integrate into this wall right and then we can reach the heavens sounds fun yeah <laughs> i'm a little brick you're a little have brick a lot of climb up in heaven i hope let's, so let's build a wall yeah build a wall hashtag build a wall <laughs> build a babylonian wall or a cage or a cage yeah where yeah. we're all integrated where we're all perfectly integrated right well you I mean, don't want to be integrated to... you want to fall off the cage 
and you're gonna be lost in in the dust in the as a little brick. No, no, I don't. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna tell him? How do you get away from this? Uh, uh, if not by necessarily by exposing uh, the the prop once again, calling uh, these folks' attention, if you like, to the fundamental problem of providence. There's a fundamental order of things. It's alive. It's vibrant. Yeah. And you're in denial, folks. You're treating yourself like little bricks because you've bought into this ideology that served you baits and yeah. turned you into flesh for the machine, fuel for the machine. Yeah. People don't like to renounce, however. people. I mean, people don't like to renounce their earthly goods like <laughs> like the rich man in the gospels but don't don't renounce the good i mean who tell you? you have to eat don't renounce the good it's just a question of gratefulness mm. of, of uh, reconnaissance um of gratitude um in um, um uh fenelon uh monseigneur fenelon uh, book, uh, The Adventures of Telemachus, Les Aventures de Telemaque. Um, he was one of the teachers of uh, um, uh, Montaigne. Uh, he has, you know, there's various adventures, and they, the folks there land uh, on a, a, a place, maybe even an island, but anyway, a country where, and they describe this country, and this is a wonderful country. And in this country, the best part of it is that the highest of virtues is gratitude. Mm. And the worst of vices is, of course, the lack of gratitude. Imagine living in a country like that. And he says, wow, that's amazing. That's, I, I, would, how, I would love to live in a country like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what we have lost, I think, is gratitude. The the fundamental phenome phenomenological stance, if you like, with a very yeah. you know, it, it, you you wait, you turn around, you see how is this possible if there's no openness to something that is fundamental, that is grounding. If the ground where you stand now does not open up and you say, Oh shoot, I'm not this individual piece of Lego. So if there is no openness to this ground you're standing on now, if you remain fixed onto the bait and yourself as a bait for others, yeah. look at me, I am an individual. You can be an individual too. Uh, yeah. um, right. You have the responsibility of, res of respecting other individuals. Yeah. Because if you don't consider me as an individual, you're a bad individual. Right. So, you know. And then I'll take you, you to, to my workshop and work on it. Right, you work on it. And you have to contribute <laughs> to our work as individuals. We're building the society, we're building this pyramid and the spirit of individual, this pyramid of individuals where everybody has to wear their individual mask and take their individual booster and vaccine and, um, and, and take their individual chip and eat their individual everything. Yeah. If you don't, right. what's going to happen to the wall? I know a single a single missing brick could call it cause the whole thing to fall down. To collapse, exactly. <laughs> and that's why we have to eliminate you, my friend, because yeah. we care for you. And if you don't want to adapt, you have an option: cerebral operation. Hmm. Instantaneous yeah. chemical castration. Is that effective? Well, <laughs> it's, you know, we have to keep pulling in, until everything comes out. Okay. All strings attach and it goes up to the brain. So uh, it all comes out through the intestines. All right. And one continuous stream. <laughs> yeah, because you are a threat to the, survive, to the survival of the society, to this wall, to the pyramid. If you don't take your brick. vaccine, millions of people could die because of you. That's terrifying. You would Man. be a mass murderer. 
Oh, man. It's the last thing I want to be. <laughs> I mean, all you need is to respect others a little bit, you know? Basic respect. Right. Yeah. What does yeah. it cost you? You just be your brick your, that you are, functional. You fit right here. Now, come over here. This is the pyramid. You fit right there. Okay. Sounds simple enough. Am I overthinking it? <laughs> just, just do it. Okay. Just do it. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, it, it, we are providing you a place. You're providing you with an identity. And you will also have to, a choice. You can pick your own avatars. Oh, boy. All right. I didn't know about that part. <laughs> yes. Yes. You get to pick your own avatar. But you have to pay the monthly fee of $45.99 because otherwise you won't be able to see your avatars. And nobody okay. else will be able to see them. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, right, right. How, how beautiful. How, oh. how totally... Right. Well, so how, are, how, are you fostering, how are you fostering gratitude in this discussion? Well, there is no gratitude, except for the fact there's a new yeah. gratitude. The new gratitude, because it's the mobster's gratitude, you know? A gratuity. Yes. Well, there's a, you have to be grateful for the place that we're providing you with. Okay. Yeah. Are you grateful? Extremely. <laughs> I have a perfect... So extremely spot. grateful. Yes, it's a cell. I have a cell, and if you don't fit in, then you'll be destroyed, and you will undermine the uh, constituents. That you will you will undermine the the safety of all. I mean, in a way, I'm I'm very important. Yes, I'm, you are. I'm an extremely important Absolutely. individual. No individual left behind. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a moral imperative. No individual must be left behind. Therefore, everybody must be integrated. You are very yeah. important. Everyone is being integrated into the into the upside down pyramid. Yes, we are heading right. into hell. Right. Well, this is the, another card. Here, you're an individual. You're very important. Here's my card. You're very important, right? Here yeah. it is. You're an individual. You're very important, right? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> You're oh. so important that Ouch. if you don't respect that importance that we are asserting, then we will mm. have to eliminate you. Mm. So either you're very important or you will be destroyed. Well, that's because you're rejecting the importance that we're giving you. Right. You don't respect how much we're respecting you? Right. You don't... You're, you're very offensive on top of that. You it's offend me by not respecting yourself more. The you way must I be respect kinder. You. you have to be more kind. Yeah. You have to recognize your own value. Yes. Your own value as a brick in the society of bricks. And if you yeah. don't take advantage of it, you will be lost. And we, we're very sorry for you. You will have. Don't you, you understand? Will... We're ready to bow down and worship you if you would only worship yourself a little well, bit. You know, we, we, we care for you. We, we care, care for you, you. because, yeah. you know, we, we think that you're currently mentally ill. Hmm. And we, we really are worried about you. you. You might need medication now. Yeah. We're very worried. We're serious. You, yeah. might, you need medication now because you don't quite appreciate the opportunity that we are giving you. And hmm. you know what will happen? This is what we're really afraid of for you. For you. For your own yeah. sake, because we're here for you. We're here okay. for you. For your oh, okay. Uh, right. We're yeah. afraid that if you don't take advantage of the opportunity that we're giving you, and it's free, mm. okay, then you will rot in hell's flames for the rest of eternity. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to see the seriousness of... You got it? <laughs> it's a dire situation. Oh, and on top of that, it. you will be... You will be condemned to being remaining guilt-ridden for the rest of eternity because you will have undermined the stability of the whole apparatus. Shucks. <laughs> so, so you know, you'll have a double, a 
a double uh, curse. The flames of hell for your impudence for having rejected our divine. Is there, a, our divine is there any way out? Is there a way out? Of, of, of this morbo stupidity? Yeah, what's the way? What's, is there an escape hatch? An escape pod? Well, this whole thing presupposes that you are a goddamn individual. Okay. And I'm saying, no, I'm so humble. I'm more humble than you asked me to be. And I'm so mm. humble, I can't even be an individual. It's not, it's not my fault. I would like to, but my powers are such that I am limited and, and I, I cannot be an individual. Yeah. I, I, I fall short of that. And, and I'm, I am nothing. Yeah. Oh no, you're nothing. How dare you say that you're not nothing? You're everything. Love yourself as an individual. Oh. Uh, but yes, but I, hmm. I I can't even love myself. Take the medication. It's your it's a moral imperative. Otherwise, you will not love yourself. Mm. Your love your body. Mm. You're perfect. Your body is perfect. You have nothing wrong with you. You're an individual. Remember. And I okay. said, well, I think I have a lot of problems with me. You see, we have an issue here. You say I'm an individual, but why is it that I am having all these problems? Where do these problems come from? Hmm. If I am really an individual, where do my problems come from? Hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe, just maybe, Uncle Stalin wasn't right when he said that if nobody asks any questions, if nobody raises a, an issue, then that means that there's no problem. Maybe there was something about him that wasn't, you know, wasn't quite right. Says who? Maybe. Yeah, so maybe. Nathan, I don't know. It's, it's so, t I know. Uh, the slim chance, a very slender chance that there was something wrong with Stalin. Okay, yeah. they, will, they will all be, f they're all racing into, into the, into a super sodoma on stilts. Um, but how else are you going to respond to this? It's not me, the individual who is responding. It's a so Socratic. If you, we're we're faced in the current in the you know predicament in the present that we're in which we live, yeah. you know we're really faced with this um, hyper highlighted uh, alternative. Uh, you know, the, the, this, this choice, as it were, between two alternatives, either the zombie or the Socratic life. Yeah. The Socratic life is like the Zen life. There's no self, ego. Yeah. Know yourself, interpreted Socratically, Socratically means there is no self. I don't yeah. know anything. It is not I who know. In Paul's words, it is not I who know. I'm paraphrasing. It is Christ who knows in me. It is the Logos that knows, not me. I am not an individual. I mean, if I am an individual, I'm a mask. I'm a farce. So stop calling me an individual because I'm broken. Mm -hmm. I'm divided. Yes. So stop yeah. flattering me. In this super society of, of imposters, of people who pretend to be little gods, we're all flattering each other. Yeah. You know, right. if, you op if you stop flattering e each other, then you will realize that there is an underlying order that makes all this bullshit possible to begin with. Mm -hmm. And we're all betraying that which makes this possible. We're betraying uh, this fundamental order, which is alive and vibrant. It's not a, me a mechanism of, of little quarks that is in the, you know, this chaotic mumbo jumbo that is underlying this pyramid. It doesn't come up standing free as a free floating signifier this this pyramid is possible because there's been a fundamental betrayal of the fundamental order and that is why it deserves to be called satanic satan is the first betrayal the first traitor yeah so that, yeah you know, that that's i think a, a sensible response to this garbage Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, as you, the language you've employed before is that of indeterminacy, the, the logos, 
You can't catch it. Yeah. You, it you, can't you're not going to be able to bait this thing. You're not, it's not going to bite on to your, your, your little hook. It ain't going right. to work. There's no bait for the logos. Right. It makes your bullshit possible. Yeah. It's not, it's not a sucker. Yeah. I don't know. I've just been reading the reading poetry of Robert Frost okay. and, um, and looking into Zen and trying to kind of bathe my, bathe my spirit, bathe my mind in, in things which are more perhaps opening, opening, be it to the logos, opening to the indeterminate. Yes, um, yes. You know, I mean, you, you keep a good imagination. Yes, when you read these translations, you know, the trans. This is a big. It's a huge uh, uh, challenge to translate these works, and I'm referring to the Zen or the Chan. Um, uh, it is a huge challenge because you have postmodern bricks who are translating this stuff for the most part. Not always, and not to a hundred percent, perhaps, but yeah. You need to okay if you really want to yeah. get something good out of it. You 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 have to think hmm, what is what is really going on? What could this mean? It's, how could it really make sense? Right. Because it doesn't right. look like it makes much sense in the translation. I mean, to me, but there is something that it mm, might. How, so let me see how how could I read it so that it makes sense? I think this is important. In the yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's not so much like even literally trying to translate it into words, but how, how could it be? How could I, how could I incorporate, how could it be put into practice? How could it, yeah. How could I see, how could I see through the lens of this thing in a way that is actually, is actually ultimately good or helpful or, yeah. I think the, the key is is this: uh, it is not I who who is seeking. Right. Well, that's that's always the that's always the fly in the ointment. It's this, you know, the tendency to always phrase things as I, I am looking, I am trying, I am fine, I am seeking. Who is seeking? I want. No, I want. I desire to have no desire. Right. I, I demand. I, 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 I demand. wish. I wish I didn't wish anything. You know this this constant sort of barreling down at the paradox of it all i my man my i just wish i didn't want any i, I, I want so badly to not want <laughs> this, this was schopenhauer's dilemma right and you know any any he, uh, he finds his own uh, he attempts his own solution there um, you know how, how do you get rid of the will um, Will you will it away? And, and, and everything turns out to be this representation of a will that you want to transcend, but you want to. And when you want to transcend it, you're expressing that universal will. So what the heck did we do? So you have to strip yourself of, of everything and you, you try to reach uh, a kind of nothing, uh, which is, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, there are certain ascetic practices right that, i don't that, think we need to 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 take that too literally um but um cl clearly there is there's something to the extent that schopenhauer takes it seriously he's not a, a complete fool um but, but you know uh, at the same time um i think that we're he, he's still trapped in a modern s scenario uh, where um, you know, it, 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 he's, he binds this discourse to this, this Cartesian ego. He's still there and he's trying to figure everything out. Um, and then at the end of the story, you know, you have the Islamic super God, which is Allah, literally the strong one, the strong God, the super God who comes and says, well, you know, all these little egos fighting as, as little tribes and, and tribal warfare um, are a problem. So we're going to solve this with a super God and he's going to uh, bring its peace. And so that way, you, you know, solve the problem. 
Yeah. But but no, we we don't. Uh, it hints the importance of, of poetry understood in classical terms, because you know don't take yourself as a mask too too seriously. You know, it, it yeah. is the problems you take seriously, not yourself. So it's not you're not trying to solve anything here. You're yeah. not trying to solve it once and for all, as of right. course Schopenhauer is trying to get to a final solution. As you, yeah yeah. You know. Well yeah, you're 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 always going to be in it. <laughs> and, and this is where it, it, it is uh, crucial. What modern scientists have left out is, of course, traditional morality. So they'll mm. tell you all about save universal safety, but they'll know nothing about honor. They'll know nothing about courage. What's going on? You have these yeah. super scientists telling you how to live your life, wear a triple mask and take your triple booster. And, open up your third eye. <laughs> and at the same time, they know nothing about how is it that our new science creates great scientists who are at the same time pedophiles? How is that? How does that work? How does that work? Is there something wrong with people? Is there something wrong with that science? Yeah, well, you know, pedophilia is sort of the ultimate perversion in that it you know, rather than sex be something that leads on to procreation. But you know why? You know why there's this explosion of pedophilia because they want to rape the child in them. Yeah. They're raping the child in themselves, and why? Because they feel repressed and they hate the fact that they're that the child in them is repressed. Instead of growing up and liberating the child and making him strong, they have castrated. They have chopped his head off. They have denied right. his humanity as a child. Now we're little bricks. And the brick must deny the child's uh, dignity. Hence, yeah. the pedophilic pornographic shit. Yeah. And you have this in school. My, 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 my girl, is her science teacher was thrown into prison because he was uh, trafficking with this crap. Uh, right. And was on the news and uh, as young as four-year-old kids involved in this. And, and the school is watching Pontius Pilate. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right. Got nothing to do with this. <laughs> He had been yeah. awarded the golden apple teaching in elementary. Now he moved. He was moved on right. to school. It's like, yeah, all of society abhor, abhors the, the pedophile, but at the same time... They're producing it. it. Yeah, it's tacitly produced. It's, it's tacitly encouraged and, like, holistically. <laughs> it's it's the all whole thing, to pedophilia. The whole thing is pedophilia because they're destroying yeah. and raping the child in each one of us. And then these right. are just sporadic man although there's an industry on, of for this sporadic manifestations shadows of the real problem it's the same story as we mentioned in the other discussion of the pornographic industry that is just a shadow of the fact that the whole society is a pornographic uh, society which is to say a society that destroys meaning and ends up with a, a facade of, of bodies that are roaming around as zombies yeah and you know, with makeup and Photoshop and all the other garbage, silicone people. Hey. Yeah. Hello, hello, you're, you're him. Hey, okay. Yes. Hey. So we're 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 speaking about the uh, the, the destruction of humanity in terms of a denial. Okay. <laughs> That's a great okay. subject to digest. <laughs> um, uh, as as um, the denial and, and and this denial is of of humanity is manifest in the the things that we condemn as a society. So in this mm. case, we were talking about pedoph pedophilia, and then we wonder why, ooh. And, and, and I say, no, this is just a little a shadow, a manifestation of a, of a problem that is endemic, that's the pandemic. We are destroying, we're denying, we're raping the child in us. Uh, it, it is that the, the child has been crippled, has been denied all dignity, and we have become little bricks. And the bricks have no t space, no time for the child. And then when we look at the child outside, we want to rape that child. We want to destroy that child, chop them up into pieces and feed the pieces to dogs, which are they actually literally do. Uh, in, in, uh, and you have people watching this because they, they see this as a manifestation of what they've already done with their own life. We cannot, oh, be child. we cannot be innocent. We have to be uh, little cubes 
that contain a lot of perversion. Yeah, <clears throat> perversion. Yes, we have been, yeah. this is a pervert society we live in. We have completely um, perverted the telos of the human being. Yeah, that's how you describe perversion, right? As a per... Uh, well... How would you describe the term perversion? Well, what does it mean? You went the wrong way, kiddo. <laughs> and this whole society has, went, gone the old, has gone the wrong way because they've replaced the telos of the human being with the pervert telos, which is, you know, the brick we were talking about, the, the, the brick having to be integrated. And, and I'm going to give you, Joachim, the right and this wonderful honor of becoming a brick. And I give, oh. provide a perfect place for you in this society of bricks. What's my no. brick number? You oh, must hold on. I'm panicking. What's my brick number? Well, I don't you'll, know my you'll, brick number. you'll find out when you know. <laughs> somebody asked me. My brick. <laughs> somebody asked me put on the brick. You'll find out. It's it's going to be changing all the time because otherwise oh, okay. somebody might steal your identity. That's true. So yeah. you you do you accept this this great honor that we're giving you, or are you? forcing us to to uh terminate you um gee, you know, if you put it that way <laughs> and you know why we we must we would have to terminate you because you would endanger the whole structure yeah. undermining this is a new um this is a new thing in, in the netherlands they're trying to uh, expand the uh cr the criminal justice um prosecution authority um by uh tackling wait yours this, oh wait i uh, i thought you were frozen by tackling um undermining behavior uh, cr criminality uh um i don't know what it entails precisely i've seen bits and things but it gives me the impression that it's uh gives um gives officials a lot of influence over stuff ordinary people want. Well, you know, um, you, you could be offensive and, and the, the offense yeah. is, is a crime. It's undermining. Yeah, it, it could be uh, in, in our virtual society of virtual bricks. Um, you know, it, it's very important that everybody's in line with the 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 discourse of, of responsibility. So, you know, you could be endangering, undermining that that universal sense of responsibility by by saying the wrong thing, which it might be a heretic. Yeah. Well, it could offend offend people. Hence, the problem of childism. You don't want to impose. You don't want to impose your will. And don't and don't be selfish. You know. You're, you're being selfish. So the individual here. You go again. Uh, here's the the bait, and then I kill you with it. You have a. Oh yeah, he yeah he had a problem with his computer. Uh, there, here we go. I we see. So. Uh, yeah, uh, we have um, you know strings attached uh, to all of that, and um, yeah, you know you don't want to be offensive. Yeah, well, it's funny to think about all of this in in relation to fear. I'm just thinking right now that. Is the operation of fear similar to what you're describing? You know, here is right. Here is here is you know. You don't want to be in a state of fear. Here here is a way to vanquish your fear. Oh, here is perpetual fear. Right. I mean, what is the exchange with relation to fear? Um, sure. Well, the, the old fear, what, what the, the old fear, the, right? What is the way out of fear? Right. 
you know, who is the one who is fearing? What is there to fear? What am I so afraid of? What are, you know, are there many fears? Right. When, yeah. when do certain fears come up? What's the first fear? What is the first fear? Okay. What is the last fear? Well, it's probably going to be the first one, but uh, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, um, you know, the old fear that they're replacing. So they want to free you from fear, okay? Of course, yeah. the first, so the first fear, what is the first fear? Well, that's bait. They're not telling you what the first fear really is. That there is the assumption Ooh. that it's, what? I mean, the, 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 the social contract uh, folks, they tell you it's death or violent death. Excuse me. That's yes, moms. they're not telling you what the real fear is, though. Um, they're telling you that the, fir that the first fear is a fear of violent death. And who wants that? It's the death of the individual, after all. Yeah. And we are individuals. Clearly. Therefore... Yeah. Because they have, of course, given you this individuality, this individual freedom that has a little problem. Yeah? A tiny one. Yes. Hardly a problem. That is exposed to violent death. <laughs> so now you understand that you being identified with the individual, which is great deal, great deal. You, nobody can divide you. However, you will need to be integrated in a society that protects you from violent death. Yes. And what do you know? If you're not integrated in that society, what do you think you can expect if not violent death? Uh-oh. Okay. Wait, you're Let's telling me I'm going to die and die violent? I was hoping to avoid violent death. Yeah, you have to pay your fees, mm. your, you know, and they're due now, not later, now. So either, either I die violently, yes. or, I don't, or I don't die violently, but I have to live in fear of dying violently. Well, you won't have but, to fear that, because we no? will provide for your safety. Okay, so you, either I die violently, or I don't die violently. Right, and you'll be safe. Okay. As a good individual with your 55 channels of shit on the TV, and you will die, you know, for the sake of later. Great, later. Will, in fact, you will live on forever. You will live forever because in you cloud, will live yeah. in the machine. The machine will be, yeah. you know, you'll be integrated in it. I'm starting to understand. <laughs> Amen. Hey, I'll bring hey, up women. another example from, from Dutch society. This is an old one. Uh, they place these um, mechanical organs in the streets and they make the most horrific racket. It is so loud, gentlemen, you wouldn't believe. What is it? And what they are start they? shaking a little. Huh? Organs. Organs. They go organs like. Ooh, in, uh, 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 no, like a, like a musical organ. Yeah. Yeah. Like a mechanical one, uh, one that okay. plays racket, just racket. Yeah? Okay. And they start. They, there's a there's a little gentleman with a cap, and he's um, holding a little cup, little brass cup with the coins inside, and he goes with the with the rhythm of the the organ. I won't call it music. Um, and uh, you know, eventually he he might go away uh, if he either what's gets the, enough or doesn't get any. <laughs> well, what's the import? What's the import? <laughs> <laughs> well, the imp what are they asking I mean, for money? What do, what do they want? A uh, coin, just uh, some spare change. They they shake it at you. Only a coin. A, yeah, only a coin. Oh, the last person who asked me for something, I said, "Don't don't. Wouldn't you have two dollars to spare? Two dollars, yeah. very modest." That's that that is modest. They weren't they weren't blasting organ music here in your area for the for the favor. Uh, yeah, no, but what's what's the relevance? Well, it's uh, you have uh, you have a problem, and if you pay them, the problem, as it were, goes away. And they'll stop, huh? 
they'll stop making the no the racket if Pre you presumably <laughs> you hope you hope fascinating yeah you hope they'll stop so okay so instead of uh encouraging them to keep going they'll um you they'll they'll you they'll stop if you don't um they'll stop harassing you they, yeah. for a time. they'll stop for harassing you and they'll say that by not harassing you they've protected you although if no as one ever were, them, as then, it were although if no one ever paid them then what motive would they have to continue exactly to I mean, right. if they don't have enough, then they'd be there all day. If they had enough, well, it's very important that you give nothing. a good example. So it's as as some of these racketeers uh, would stress at the beginning of the COVID circus. It's it's not that you know it's important you know for the health that you keep that mask on. You have to give a good example and remind everyone that it's good to be afraid and remember that there's you know you find safety here. Okay, however. You're vaccinated, you got your booster. However, you still have to keep that mask on as a psychological device to remind ourselves of the founding fathers of our society and the fundamental problems that our society is there to solve, the threat of violent death. By keeping a mask on, this is a kind of pledge of allegiance that you're reciting. Um, you remember, ooh, where are we coming from? You know, imagine what, you know, would happen if we abandoned our place, your place as an individual brick in the society of individual. Imagine if you gave that up now, all in a sudden you said, well, there's no virus. Where's the virus? We are, we, we, we're out of variance here. We went through the, all of the letters of the alphabet. We're no more, no more variants. It doesn't matter. You have to live as if, Kantian, as if there were a virus. It doesn't matter if there's a real one. As if, because outside of our society of safety, there is that lingering problem. Hobbesian threat of violent, imminent violent death, imminent violent, right? Death. So in order to remind each other that there is that threat lurking outside of our wonderful digitized data society where all the information is free floating and available to all in this web, ain't that great? Uh, we have to wear that mask. We have to take that extra booster because it'll boost up our memory and it'll remind us of the untenability of that alternative living outside of the machine. It's a psychological device that is thoroughly legitimized by the demands of the machine. You know, if you, what else are you gonna do? The people are stupid. They, they need this, you know, you never know, you might have some savage come and propping up you know, like a like a fungi, like a little mushroom, and, and then say, and then more mushrooms will pop up, and then say, well, you know, what if we were, what if we didn't? Like, let me take it off and see what happens. <gasps> Nothing happened. <laughs> Shit. You're in hell. Explorers, Marco, stop. <laughs> Nothing happened. Oh, Jews, I, you saw those droplets that went and flying through the wind and the wind currents and went to. Con contaminated and I'm responsible for the death of millions of people. But what if nothing happened? What if nothing happened? How do you know nothing happened? Well, no, not 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 if the only way of knowing is is the is the news. Right. They are the ones who tell you if what happened and so why it happened. What the might news. have happened and you don't know it. They'll be able to retrace the droplets to your own lungs. Right. Right. There'll be a photo of you taking down the mask, then there'll be side by side a photo of someone's head exploding in China. Yeah. And then... <laughs> well, the, the cemetery, they managed to as well go to the morgue and just, yeah. which, is, which is what they did at the beginning of the circus in Italy. They mm. did that. They showed, you know, they had these old pictures of morgues that, uh, old, recycled. And, and then they showed all these uh, coffins and they said all over Italy, this is what is happening. 
That's mm. the first time we're doing that well, in China as well. The, the people China, are, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that. Doesn't sound like a very fun circus to me. <laughs> so, well, okay. I mean, so uh, <laughs> you want some bread with it? Right. Oh, okay, I guess. <laughs> so I was discussing the issue of willing and being willing uh, with Paul. You know, without uh, taking the stance of "I want," uh, we we have we are facing the possibility of saying, "I am willing to uh, see beyond this. I am willing uh, to expose myself to." Uh, you know, you know, I'm not selfish. The selfish man says, I want today. And in order to escape your own selfishness, you have to assimilate to the society of selfishness, which now is the new kindness. The culture of kindness. Culture of kindness. That produces monsters. Welcome to the culture of kindness. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, we have but the monstrosity of the system has its own production and industry of scapegoats. So you will have the news report that has a scapegoat. Oh, look at this criminal. Oh, look at this pedophile. Oh, look at this monster. Of course, it's just a projection of, you know, a shadow of the whole monster society that we're building up. And we feel better when we look at the scoundrel on the news. Latest report, you know, uh, school teacher, science teacher, uh, arrested for pedophilia bullshit and oh terrible and they report did you know about this no i it's unbelievable how can you have such a teacher well he had received a global uh, what was that the golden apple prize in for elementary school teaching and he had been teaching for 25 years in, um, in elementary and middle school and he was the most loved beloved of teachers how is that possible? I can't believe. I would not want to send my children to that school. But he's got the golden apple. Doesn't well, that make it a yes? Just can you can can you fathom? Can you imagine what the primary concern of the school director is now? Um, to make everybody forget about it as fast as possible. Right. Let's talk about the next apple, dance. Let's talk about the next ball that we're going to be organizing. I need to hand out a new golden apple to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll be you, apple. Chris. To a, new, a new teacher. Yes, yes. Maybe if you play nice, it'll be you. But I'm not making anything up here, huh? <laughs> this is precisely apple. what happened here in, in, my, my, in my girl's school. Precisely. So what is the director up to now? Oh, shoot. Let's have a great party and forget yeah. about it all. You know, because why? Because you see, if students left that school, then the state would see that the number in that number number of students had decreased and they would yeah. lower the budget yeah. in that school. And they wouldn't be able to have enough money to pay the people who work there. And so they would be faced with the choice either we reduce salary or we lay off we terminate some violent salary. death yes. what do you think they're all terminators they'll terminate one of the bricks and they'll see if the whole thing falls apart or not mm -hmm. they'll find the you know the most expendable or the you know least necessary of bricks and they'll get rid of him so they'll keep their salaries this is of course a whole charade but this is going on everywhere and in our culture of kindness, as they call them, where they're creating monstrosities, they're rejecting traditional morality uh, uh, absolutistically. There, in our schools, there's no question of honor. There's no question of courage. It's all out of the window, not the word only, but the very problem. There's no question of honor. Where the hell is it? How can you have a school that has dumped the question of honor in the lowest of toilets in, in hell? How, what kind of school is that? What does it mean, scole? Scole. 
this is as, as far as the new science is from episteme. There's no meaning to this anymore. Science means what? Uh, Lego. No, yeah, Tetris. Yeah, okay. But kaleidoscopic. Mm -hmm. Reminds yeah. me of a story from elementary school. Um, when you, when you gentlemen were young, have you ever witnessed a war between the boys and the girls? Yeah, it's ongoing, I thought, still. <laughs> it's ongoing, <laughs> yes. Well, at the time, it, it flared up a little bit. It went hot in, instead of the usual cold. And, well, I suppose it's always hot, really. But I, um, I uh, had a girl against the fence, and I gave her a flying karate kick to the midriff. And well so done. one of the teachers called me over and he goes, that, that is very unkind of you, young man. <laughs> what, what possesses you to do such a thing? And I said, look, I don't know if you, if you, if you knew about it, sir, but there is a war going on. <laughs> That's really what I said. There is a war going on. <laughs> and yeah. I believe that my act of violence was justified in that context. <laughs> I, I had my honor to consider, you see. <laughs> well... Yeah, I know. It's good practice. Try it again honor. sometime in the supermarket. What do yeah. you mean by honor? Uh, in graduate school, I learned that the only nobility that we can that we could speak about that would with, with legitimacy was inherited. Okay, so hmm. you know, in my uh, uh, first uh, doctor committee. Uh, there was this guy who told me, look, I have a problem with what you're doing, what you're writing. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. When you speak about nobility, the only one I can, we can talk about here is the inherited one, which isn't worth much, of course, uh, uh, when it's left on its own. You could buy a piece of land in Scotland. Right. So what are they teaching in schools? Are schools part of the problem? And well, obviously they're integral, they're an essential element to the constitution of, of whoredom. And um, um, very handsome background. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, in, in Lyon, there was this wonderful park where I was. Um, and in the winter, you would have these great trees uh, without leaves, and mm -hmm. it would be packed with uh, ravens. Mm. Black. Yeah, I've, I've seen ravens back here before. I bet. Yeah. I bet. But there, they would be all over the place. And uh, fantastic when they had a bit of a, a fog. So this mm -hmm. fog, this and, and the, it was pretty cold at some point. Not like you know, constant yeah. weather, but you would have this, uh, and and no people, uh, no people. Yeah, well, apocalyptic. It's it's a good environment for me to read Robert Frost. Yes, yes. Yeah. So how do we escape this question with with um, while you were uh, eating? Uh, <laughs> We were with Chris. How do you escape, if not? How do you open up your your yourself as mask, um, to a fundamental order of things, a, a living order of things, or a providence, a mysterious fundamental order of things? Uh, this new society has new everything, uh, including gratefulness, gratitude. The new gratitude, you have to be grateful to the place that you're given, but it's predicated over betrayal. There is no gratefulness to that which makes this society even possible. The, which is the not worthless material upon which man. Well, yeah, but that's not, you know, that's no, what makes it possible in reality, um, you know, in a negative sense, is a betrayal because it's predicated on this betrayal of what? What did they get rid of? Well, precisely divine providence in, tradi in traditional terms. However, then you, you come to appreciate it, but there's a, there's a fundamental order of things and we've gotten rid of it and we wanna reify it within that society. We wanna reconstruct it, we wanna dream about it 
And it ends up, you know, my, my again, to my uh, this old colleague of mine, my correspondent, who's, who were, if, is, is essentially is telling me that it's, you know, it's fine. Um, there's problem, we have problems with our society, but with the individualism and so forth, but we wanna go back, if anything, to this older atti attitude, uh, which was we do find here and there in, in old societies, where you have the individual who strives for uh, being God, really, you know, having God's power and strength and, and, and knowledge, so being God. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Why not? Well, 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 but you see, the moderns will tell you, our, our gurus today will tell you that that's selfish because you have to share, share, spread the wealth. And so, you know, you can't play the game on your own. No man is an island. And you, we will do it together as a society. So you have to accept that you're, you know, you buy the individual ticket and we will work on this together. And we will have our representatives who represent science in a Faucian way. And, um, and in their name, we will feel blessed to have our place in this great project uh, we're getting there, but don't do it on your own. That would be selfishness. Yes, yes, it would. Selfish. You would be selfish, and you know, that's not a... good. That's not good. You're bad. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> oh, but th but that's good. You have, you have to be bad to be. Well, yeah, I mean, no, you, yeah, you, you, you're missing the point completely because he didn't admit to one thing. He's bad and white. Oh, yeah. So that's not good. And now, never mind the fact that he's, he, he believes that he is male. Yeah, right. Right. You, you don't believe it, right? At least give me something that is redeemable about you. Hmm. Oh, you're I'm coming up empty. <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's not. Um, he's not. Um, he's not uh, polluting right now. He's not polluting. Oh, yeah. Yes, I he's am. not loitering. He's not wa uh, throwing waste around in the. What, is that a? Is that a cigarette? Yeah, I'm polluting as, as I speak. Uh oh. Okay, you, Marco. You, to again, the again, Joachim, I think you you missed the point, because if he is not integrating, then he is the pollutant element agent he is pollution um okay, yeah, you know, yeah. as i was told in um oops yes okay there was a technical glitch in the system as i was told myself i'm you know in, in le less than perhaps perhaps very kind terms that i was the disease to which um Somebody else rejoined the, the added the no no qualification. I am the allergen. I'm not the disease. I'm the allergen. This was on public transport or grocery store or what was this? No, in a family setting. So, um, you know, it, it's um, in this culture of kindness. Um, you just might as well call yourself a, a, a smiling Nazi because that's what it's all about. It's, it's about smiling while you're stabbing people uh, who don't agree with you. And, you know, it's just, you know, um, it, it's sad for kids. Um, it's a disgrace. And I think that, you know, spade is a spade and you call it for what it is. And if you don't get back to this dignity of traditional morality and, and the disc and the words, the terms, the vocabulary of traditional morality, then you, it, it's inescapable. You will end up as a, as a zombie demon. Uh, you can be the super scientist 
who is at the same time a super pedophile. I mean, what the hell are they talking about in schools? It's, it's training children to become pedophiles. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They are turning into pedophiles because they're destroying, they're denying, they're raping their own uh, innocence. Yeah. yeah, they might be raping themselves, you know, autogynophilia and all that. Well, you know, transitioning. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You know, deny your own nature, anything that is that is innocent about you, and demonize it, because it's after all, it's something bad. It's bad. It's just this kind of uh, uh, selfish residue from hell that you have to you have to transition from that to this kingdom of free, this realm of freedom, to speak yeah. with good old Marx. Um, this new kingdom in which you're all. Free individuals. Free individuals. Wonderful. There we go. Which just says in that video, which I don't want to advertise, nevertheless, you know, the most watched by far video on earth, where you have this a Chinese kid speaking or singing in English uh, how great it is to escape from the extended family into uh, uh, digital. Uh, submarine cage. Mm. And, With uh, a little fish inside of it, a little fish friend. Yeah, digital, virtual. He's an avatar. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. So that so much for the subject of our uh, meeting today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We individual, are we individuals? Now, let's get to the bottom of this. Joachim, are you an individual? I'm less and less sure the more I think about it. Okay. Anything. Okay, you need mild medication. What about you, Chris? <laughs> are you an I don't, individual? I'm, I don't understand the question. You don't understand the question? Heavier medication. A little Ritalin. heavier. Ritalin. I think you might need a little heavier medication. You, may, you might need therapy, counseling. I think so. I think you need to, I think you need a the rapist, my friend. Uh, also, right. um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, not aggressiveness, no, uh, management. What is it, fear management? No, what's the other a one? Anger management? Anger management. Anger management, because okay. Because we can see that you are, there is anger latent in you. Otherwise you would have welcomed your, you know, to, you would have jumped on the boat, but something that is holding you back. We will have to clinically analyze the situation. And um, I, we're pretty confident that we will be able to find uh, the seed of the seeds of wrath in you and um, excise them. And Propose it's be because he's insufficiently integrated. I think if he was more, you know, among if he felt he could be more among yes, the rest, but you see the so reason. Resentful. But why is he not integrated? Something must be wrong with him on on a uh, in terms mm. of on the a wiring. cellular level. Yeah, a, a de de developmental deficiency. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we care for you, and so the department of of um, redundancy department social integration will um, will have to uh, try its best to cure you. The Department of Kindness. Yes, a, a universal <laughs> kindness. Absolutely. Hey, that's every department, Chris. Don't, don't play games. We'll have to rewire uh, you. The Department of Departments of Kindness. Right. Okay. Well, may kindness be with you. Mm -hmm. And also with you. No, <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm no, they, they, they can just crucify me straight away. Okay. No, I don't believe in kindness. Uh -oh. You can quote me on that one. By the way, kind in Dutch, if you spell that out, it means child. Sure, sure. Yeah. Kinder. Yeah. Mm. Kinder esse chocolate. <laughs> yeah. They do. The Dutch have figured a lot out that, that needs to be integrated into the broader society. <laughs> That's just scrap the organs. Uh. <laughs> we'll be golden. The Dutch model of, of universal kindness.
<laughs> yeah. May, right. may the kindness be with you. <laughs>